now for another segment of Image Bearers with Dr. Davis. What's the, the media throw at us? Extremist. You don't want to be an extremist. That's the worst possible thing a person can call you in today's society. God's people, if you're not an extremist, you're nothing. I have patients. They'll come in to see me. And there's only one relationship that will work when people come in to see me as a professional. They're coming in with a health problem. They want me to do something. Only one relationship works in that situation. I call the shots. I say it. You do it. Period. If you don't, this relationship isn't going to work. I can't help you. They want to negotiate with me. What do I have to do to get well? Look in the mirror. What do you mean by that? You're overweight. Well, I want a second opinion. Okay, you're ugly too. <laughs> I'd never do that. <laughs> They'll come in to me with a health problem and I'll say, well, this is what you have to do to get well. And they will argue with me. And they want to negotiate. And you know, those days are so gone in my professional career because I can't help you. You demand a certain type of relationship with me that won't work. And if you demand that kind of relationship with me, my purposes for you aren't going to come about. In other words, you're not going to get healthy. And then you're going to go around town and say, I went to Dr. Davis and he didn't help me. When in fact, they went to Dr. Davis and they didn't do a darn thing that I said. The reason God demands this kind of relationship and no other is because this type of relationship is the only type that will allow his purposes to come to be. And that's what counts, not our purposes, his. What is his purpose? To create a people in whom he rules, and therefore a people through whom he can rule. And if you don't stay in the parameters of that relationship, he can't rule through you. Because you demand a certain type of relationship with him. Like my patients demand a certain type of relationship. And let's say someday they come up to me, and they say to me, Dr. Davis, you remember me? I was your patient, so-and-so. And And you know what I would say to them? You were never my patient. Did I know who they were? Yes. Were they ever my patient? No. Why? They demanded their own type relationship with me. That's what Jesus is saying. I was never your God. You were never my person. Therefore, in that context, I would have to say, I never really knew you. I had a friend years ago, his name was Buckshot, nice guy, real name was Jerry. And he knew I was in the covenantal family, and we used to have theological discussions, kept saying to me this one phrase. He said, yeah, I know that's okay for you, Tim, but God and I have an understanding. I know that's what he requires, but I've tweaked it. And he understands. I said, yeah, Jerry, he absolutely understands that. This is the world's lie. Oh, you don't want to be a zealot. For goodness sakes, don't go overboard with this faith thing. It's okay, but, but you know, you got to live in the real world. Keep it in your safe for when you die. Present the, the fire insurance to him on that last day. You'll get into heaven, but don't really. What's the, the media throw at us? Extremist. You don't want to be an extremist. That's the worst possible thing a person can call you in today's society. You're looking at an extremist. God's people, if you're not an extremist, You're nothing. If you don't have this kind of relationship with him, he can't mold you into competent administrator. It's like my boys. When they were growing up, I wasn't your buddy. They had enough friends. I had enough friends. They were afraid of me, as they should have been. I've heard parents say, my daughter is my best friend. They don't need you to be a best friend. They need you to be a parent. God doesn't need us as best friends, and we don't need him as a best friend. We need him to be a parent. That's the sixth petition of the Lord's Prayer when Jesus said, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil, and the way you do that, God, is to stay who you are. The best thing I could do for my sons was not be their buddy. The best thing that we can have with God and he can do for us is to stay our God. What well, we were in a service years ago. Jesus was up on a car like it was a surfboard and his hair was flying. And he said, you know Jesus. And I said, 
You don't. See, that kind of attitude that we've distilled him down into, why? Because it's fuzzy and warm and can relate to that. And, you know, I'm okay, you're okay, it doesn't really matter. He's nothing to fear kind of relationship. And the minute we do that, and we've done it big time, wholesale, the minute we've done that, we're no longer in a position to be molded into someone he can rule in and therefore someone he can rule through. That makes sense, doesn't it? As long as you control the relationship, as long as my patients controlled the relationship that I was going to have with them, I couldn't do anything for them. Same thing here. Why is that important? Because he needs his plan to go forward in your individual life, rule in you, so he can rule through you. Competent administrator, you bring God's future into the present our faith is not about a verbal technique. Forget that noise. It's not a verbal technique. That is so shop-worn. Besides which, terribly ineffective. I don't think that has ever worked one time. A lamb will lie down with a lion. An infant will play by the cobra's nest. And why is that all possible? Isaiah says, no one will harm or do what is evil on my entire holy mountain for... The land will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, just like the sea is full of water. How beautiful. And this covenant says, that happens now. When we are his people and he is our God. Listening and carefully keeping is the response to the relationship. Listening and carefully keeping shows who is in, not how to get in. Visit the Atheist Antidote YouTube channel and follow him on Facebook and Twitter. Abroclo les productions.